on this, the final video of Cryptid Month, we're closing it out in a rather big way, with a big feet, with a big foot. That's right, we are talking about the Sasquatch himself, and yes, there's no way that I'm going to be able to cover all of the movies that feature the Bigfoot. There are way, way more than I'm going to cover here. We're going to cover 10 of them. Uh, I will most likely do a sequel to this at some point to cover more of them. But yeah, here's 10 movies about the Bigfoot, and if you don't know the story about what he's all about, let's get it from the man himself. Let's check out what the Crypto Hunter has to say. Guys, I'm super excited because to, today I'm with Ross Arbuck, who's actually going on a Bigfoot expedition next year. Ross, tell us a little bit about Bigfoot, just a little bit about his origin, where he came from. Well, where do you want me to start? I'll start at the beginning. The beginning? Well, uh, it seems as though back, you know, Native American times, stories of Bigfoot, Sasquatch, they had a different name for him back then. They're part of the totem. I mean, you got the eagle, the bear, Sasquatch. What do you want? The Native Americans have been talking about them. Who's, nobody's going to call them liars, especially now. They've been around for too long. And then you got Theodore Roosevelt. He comes over as a big game hunter. The guy killed tigers, rhinos, elephants, giraffes. He was big game. Dude talked about seeing Sasquatch in the middle of the nowhere. The wild man of the, you know, the forest. So... And then he puts on all these weird protections of the national forests for the bears. It's not for the bears, dude. He's going after Sasquatch. He wants them protected, maybe so he can hunt them. I don't know. Maybe so that nobody finds out about them. And then fast forward to now. You have people all over the world. Jim Bob out in Mississippi. And Jethro up in Texas. All talking about Sasquatch. They all describe the same mannerisms, the same things, the same movements, behaviors, all this stuff. You know, there's more proof of these things being existing, living here on the planet than God. You know, where's the proof of God? You got him pinned up on a cross and you got this guy, everyone's seen him run around the forest. So yeah, I'm going out on an expedition. Guy is pretty well known. He's shown me and the world what I believe to be Sasquatch. So I'm going to go out there. We're going to check it out. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to go out for a whole week. This is the Sasquatch, you know, and uh, come back and no one will believe me because uh, nobody has an open. Guys, thanks for having me on for Cryptid Month. It's been a real pleasure. I... I really love Josh's channel, Movie Timelines Forever. Uh, love you guys. Stay safe. Uh, we'll see you next time. All right, lace up and let's strap in and let's go hunting for some Bigfoot. Number 10. Back in 1980, we get the rather notorious Night of the Demon, known for being one of the British video nasties and was banned until 1994 when it was only released after being heavily cut down. It was directed by James Wasson and remains his one and only credit in tales of a professor who has a class that he's showing a bunch of articles about mysterious deaths and they decide to investigate because you know that that's something that you would want your kids to be doing in their college courses hey son what'd you do in class today well the professor thinks that they're covering up murders by bigfoot so he's gonna take us all into the woods to uncover the truth solid lesson plan they all head up to the woods without their parents' permission because they're all in their 30s, and Bigfoot shows up for some hilarious sleeping bag tossing action. And then things go a little over the top when a biker stops to take a pee, and uh, the Squatchy grabs his junk and yanks it off, which is, yeah, uh, pretty insane for a 1980 film. There's a Bigfoot cult and more Bigfoot attacks, and when we finally get to sort of see him, well... <laughs> It's total gold. There's a weird subplot with a woman named Wanda who I guess had a had a baby with the Bigfoot at one point because I guess when she was younger it raped her, but the baby was killed. This one is weird and silly, but it is I mean it's kind of dull when the big fella in on the screen, although with some of the content I 
I guess I can sort of see why it was dubbed the video nasty, but honestly, it's really not that bad. It's genuinely silly at times and has one of the absolute goofiest monster suits that I've seen in quite a while. So uh, check it out for, for a laugh, I suppose. Number nine. Okay, um, we have to talk about this because I can't believe what I just watched, and it's Bigfoot's Bride from 2021. I can't really talk about this movie without just breaking down what happens in it, so that's that's what I'm going to do. Um, the first nine minutes of the film are a dad and son walking through the woods, hunting while being stalked by a Bigfoot. There's these weird filters on every single shot, and some of them are to give the film an old school grindhouse look, and some, I guess, are Bigfoot vision, but mostly they're just there. Bigfoot then kills them. After the opening credits, there's then six solid minutes of a man fishing while Bigfoot watches him. There's no dialogue and no real action, it's just a dude fishing with a variety of color grading happening on each shot. The sequence doesn't even have a point since the guy just finishes fishing and I suppose goes home and the Bigfoot eats his discarded fish heads. And then, 19 minutes in, we meet our Bigfoot. This is the Bigfoot that we get. Seriously, someone said they were making a Bigfoot movie and a guy came up to them with this as the suit design and they all said yes, let's, let's go with that. This character introduction, which is just uh, Biggie sitting by the water being sad about being ugly, is four straight minutes. Okay, so now we meet who is, I suppose, the the bride of the title, and he <laughs> um, touches her pee and then just kind of watches her from afar as she sets up camp and just kind of does stuff like stripping for no apparent reason, and this goes on for eight long minutes. This movie's almost half over and nothing, nothing has happened yet. We're 32 minutes in, and there's no story at all. It's basically like a day in the life of uh, Sasquatch. 10 more minutes of BF walking around, spying on the girl, and, and I wish I was exaggerating these time frames, but I am not. The next 10 minutes actually have some sort of action as he attacks some more hunters, killing them with some of the most ridiculous cartoon blood effects that you will ever see. And, I mean, do you see where this is all going? Should I keep going with this? Uh, okay. But, but you asked for it. At just around the hour mark, Footy finally chases the girl, and I, I guess he, I guess he rapes her very classy and she dies so I guess she's not the bride and this is where everything just all happens since they find a few other girls that he'd taken captive and did I did I mention that he's wearing mechanics overalls for some reason and then one last girl has his baby the end did, did I did I even just watch something what what the hell was that the, this movie has the gall to give us this after the credits scene as well. Uh, I think because they had some After Effects 101 templates laying around, and, and I just realized that we're two for two with Bigfoot rape. So, so glad that that's a thing. Number eight. 2018 gave us Big Legend from writer-director Justin Lee, and apparently this guy plays a character on the TV show Young Rock that sounds suspiciously like Manic Mike Mangles. And we get this young couple on a camping trip, and they get engaged, so uh, you know bad things are bound to happen. And sure enough, Natalie gets taken away. Later, Tyler is recovering, and holy crap, is that is that Beth from better off dead I'd, I'd, I'd ski on one ski for her and then holy crap it is Stevie Wayne voice of KAB and is this film just full of my old crushes although I feel the need to clarify that um, like Lane I would pick Monique over Beth when he finds evidence of something in one of his photos so he goes out in search of it and oh yeah he finds it 
after finding his fiance's ring and another guy who is also in the hunt for the Squatch, and Ty is stuck trying to help him out of the woods while in a wounded state. When we finally get a look at our hair monster, he looks pretty good, but I did chuckle at the basic stock sound effects that they gave him. It's a pretty solid survival film, and it's actually really well shot with good acting, and, and best of all, no one gets raped, at least on screen. I mean, I, we, we don't know what happened between Biggie and Natalie, but they certainly don't suggest anything of that nature, so I'm gonna go with that there wasn't. Possibly the weirdest part about this one is the last minute appearance by Lance Henriksen showing up all Nick Fury style to set up a sequel called The Monster Chronicles, which I guess may or may not happen. Number 7. Alright, I think it was inevitable that we talk about 2004's Suburban Sasquatch, since it's now taken its place as one of the worst films in history, and within the first couple of minutes, we see exactly what we're getting. Terrible acting, a hilariously goofy Bigfoot suit with suspiciously misplaced nipples, and first grade level CGI. What is this supposed to be? <laughs> These policemen, and believe me, they're, they're policemen. These are clearly police issue uniforms, and there's some of the smoothest editing of all time. John, don't do this. It's my right to investigate. I didn't cut it like that. That's how it is in the movie. Bigfoot attacks randomly, making the same sound over and over again. <laughs> I guess killing people by throwing arms at them and occasionally attacking them so that their arms fly off, which then just magically reattach, I guess. And there's a subplot with a native girl who's hunting the big fella and a cop who has a history with it. And as much as I made fun of the suit in Bigfoot's Bride, this is far, far worse. Forget the fact that someone decided that this was good enough to put in their movie, forget that for just one second, because after that, someone said, okay, this is how this looks, so let's show it as much as possible and light it directly so that you can really see it in all of its glory. It's just sheerly ridiculous, and you kind of have to be in the right frame of mind to really enjoy it, because it's like a group of middle school kids made a movie with middle school level talent and equipment, but when they shot the footage, they somehow appeared on camera as a bunch of 30 year olds. There's the infamous and notorious CGI net, which looks bizarre, especially because one scene later it's clear that they actually do have a real net, but I guess it wasn't big enough. Then everyone just charges at it only to get pushed aside one by one, and I really don't think it has the magic that makes it a must watch, but it is, it is worth checking out if you love comedically bad movies. And, and oh, and guess what? Looks like it's insinuated that this Bigfoot also rapes women, so we're the uh, three for four here. Yay? Number six. We go now to 2012's simply titled Bigfoot from Sci-Fi, which starts off with some unedited footage of a bear. And, um, this. This is like only 10% uh, better than the Suburban Sasquatch? Oddly enough, uh, this is weird, this is directed by the guy from the first X-Men movie who dissolved into goo. Uh, who also, in another Bigfoot link, played Mr. Henderson in a TV version of Harry and the Hendersons. Danny Bonaduce is here and he's top build, so this is also just loaded with star power, especially since Greg freaking Brady is here too, as is Audrey Horn and Johnny Fever, and yeah, the budget is maxed out with old TV stars, so it's no wonder the Bigfoot looks like Donk. Bruce pops up as well, and uh, the plot revolves around a big 80s themed music festival, and they play it up as a big event, but it looks like they only got about 30 extras or so. Alice Cooper pops in playing himself. Alright, look at this audience. What audience? And then when Bigfoot attacks and hits this girl, he smacks her so hard she swaps genders. 
There's a weird environmental message happening here, but the film makes sure to paint the loggers as pretty evil and the protesters as pretty, pretty stupid, so I'm not sure who we're rooting for here. They kind of make everyone out to be pretty awful, and this is the exact kind of sci-fi movie that I just don't get. It's kind of boring, but seems to take itself kind of seriously, but still just kind of fails, but doesn't fail enough to be memorable. Once you get past the novelty casting and the shoddiness of the CGI, you're, you're ready to take a nap, really. It, it, it does end with a big battle at Mount Rushmore, but by this point the whole movie is basically a cartoon, and not in a fun way. Number 5. I feel like it just wouldn't be one of these lists if I didn't include something by Mark Polonia, so let's check out 2016's Bigfoot vs. Zombies, or BVZ. It begins in typical Polonia fashion with a high caliber Bigfoot suit and, as is tradition, a stray barrel of toxic waste. Some regulars show up, as you would expect. These zombies are guys in very obvious Halloween masks. I'm pretty sure that these are the same masks used in Amityville Island, which came out several years after this one, so they clearly just reused these masks for that, and, and I, and I kind of think that they just recycled some of this footage wholesale. If you've seen enough Polonia, this guy's familiar, as is this guy, and I did a deep dive that I haven't done before, and it's Ken Van Sant, who mainly just appears in Polonia films, but his character's name is Duke Larson, and he also played a guy named Duke in Splatter Beach, Monster Movie, and in Sharkenstein, he's named Duke Lawson, apparently, but is Duke Larson again in Virus Shark, and now I really want to know if it's supposed to always be the same character, and yet, at the same time, have no interest in actually going to find out. Things take like a really, really long time to get going, and it's pretty damn boring for most of it, but there are occasional weird moments to entertain. But things don't get interesting until the 41 minute mark when Bigfoot finally shows up to fight the zombies. Some things, I'm not sure, are intentionally funny. One more step. I'll blow your head off. These zombies talk, and Duke is turned and then killed by foot, so I guess it can't be the same character as in the other movies, I suppose. Bigfoot gets bitten, and, and look at this thing, it's, it's pretty ridiculous, but at least it's better looking than the CGI thing from sci-fi. Back off, Bigfoot! I'm pretty sure that that's the first time that that line of dialogue has been used in a movie. So yeah, it's more zombie than it is Bigfoot, and as far as the MP film collection, this one's not quite crazy enough to be up there with some of his more ridiculous entries, and sadly it just comes off as being dull. But hey, we, we've now had two movies in a row in which there was no Bigfoot rape, so yay for that. Um, that's a thing that we are celebrating. Number four. Let's hope things get a little bit better when we go all the way back to 1976 with Sasquatch The Legend of Bigfoot, which was director Ed Ragozino's only film. It starts with the Patterson film, the most famous Bigfoot film, and I'm going to tell you why this footage is fake. Uh, you see, there was this guy named Ray Wallace, and he was one of the most famous people for early Bigfoot sightings and possibly coined the name back in 1958, and it's since been revealed that he was faking sightings by using big wooden feet to leave imprints. Roger Patterson, who intended to film Bigfoot, went to the area in which the Wallace fake footprints were being left and managed to get the now famous film footage. So. What had to happen was that Patterson went to an area with a fake Bigfoot and somehow just stumbled onto a real one. Sure, dude. Anyway, uh, this film. Uh, Sasquatch is made in the form of a documentary being made by Chuck here, who is taking an expedition to hunt down a Sasquatch. If you're a fan of movies in which there's a narrator who basically just tells you exactly what's happening on screen, then this is the movie for you. There's cougar attacks and flashbacks to another famous Bigfoot encounter with miners and a group of Sasquatches throwing rocks at them. We get some fighting grizzlies and the format is basically just some wildlife footage and scenic photography interspersed with campfire tales of Bigfoot and here's where I got thrown. Um, they say that they've been out on the trails for three months. Uh, three freaking months. How much film did they bring? 
Then they say that they've arrived at the place that the computers told them that the Sasquatches would probably live. And they're just getting to that place uh, now? Wouldn't that be the first place you went? Did it just take them that long to get to that place? What place in the US in the 1970s required three months of horseback riding to get to? This one's more about the history of Bigfoot and the recreations than it is the main story, as that takes a good hour and 10 minutes to really kick in, and it, it's all right. It, it's a step in the right direction for this list, but it's not great by any stretch of the imagination, but it is at least interesting. Number three. Here we go, back to the earliest days of Bigfoot mania, and it's Bigfoot from 1970. And it might actually be the first film to feature Sasquatch on the silver screen. There had apparently already been Yeti films, but no Bigfoot until this film. It featured legend John Carradine, and it does not hold back at all before giving us some big old footprints and a young lady besieged by one of the furries. Then, when a biker's girlfriend is also abducted, he teams up with Hawks and his sidekick to go get her back. And they're being held captive for, what else, uh, breeding. And one of their kind is a human Bigfoot hybrid, so it's something they've already done. And out of all the timelines and lists that I've done, I never would have guessed that the Bigfoot one would be the most rape heavy. The rest of the biker gang also heads up to the woods to help out and the Bigfoots are just like regular sized guys in hair suits and they're, they're pretty hilarious. It does have some moments like when they drag this girl away to do basically uh, whatever to her and none of the guys tied up have any reaction at all. They're just like, oh well, uh, that sucks for her. It's silly fun late 60s schlock that would probably be more enjoyable if the entire premise wasn't trying to get to these women before they're horribly raped and it kind of being played for laughs. Number two. Probably the most divisive movie on this list is 2013's Willow Creek and I love it. It's both written and directed by Bobcat Goldthwait. Yes, that Bobcat, the screaming guy from Police Academy. In case you're unaware, quite a while ago he shifted into directing and has made several great films, including this one. It's a found footage style film and has been compared to Blair Witch quite a bit, which is a fair comparison, especially since there was no script here and the dialogue was almost entirely ad-libbed. It's about a young couple making a film retracing the path taken for the Patterson-Gimley film, hoping to get their own footage. Willow Creek is the name of the town in which Bigfoot is sort of a tourist draw, although they have missing persons posters up that are pretty recent. And this one uh, takes quite a while to get going, so the whole film hinges on these two, since they're pretty much the only people in it for the most part, and they're, they're pretty great and engaging and feel real without being grating and argumentative for the entire film. They do encounter some of the unusual locals of the area, including longtime John Carpenter regular Peter Jason, possibly the only name actor in the film. When they set up camp and strange things happen to them, is it a Bigfoot or is it the locals messing with them? I, I think people are pretty split on this one with some discounting it as boring and slow, but I think it moves at a pretty nice pace and its centerpiece is a single take 18 minute sequence that's worth the price of admission. The ending of this one does kind of insinuate some rape stuff, so I guess we're all we're, we're back to all that then. Number one. Finally, we wrap up with 2014's Exists, which is coincidentally another found footage piece, but this one is directed by Eduardo Sanchez, one of the directors on the Blair Witch Project, and has since gone on to helm a series of pretty great horror films, including this one. This one gives us a pretty standard setup with a group of young folk headed up to the woods for a vacation and getting into a small accident on the way up. Of course, there's something in the woods with them and things escalate at an extremely rapid pace and this movie moves. It's not perfect, as there's quite a few moments which defy the logic of any of the found footage methods, even though they've set up a lot of reasons for cameras, what with GoPros being placed around the house and on their persons, plus some security cameras, but there, there's still a bunch of moments that that would just make you say, would, would someone still be taking the time to hold that camera up? 
That being said, it makes really good use of the format to just tease you a bit with shots of the foot, and with it looking like a like amateur Sasquatch footage, it works really well actually. It, it all leads up to a pretty wild finale and a surprisingly sad ending, and it's definitely worth checking out, and it's my favorite movie on this list. So there you have it, 10 movies about the Sasquatch. Just a drop in the bucket, honestly, in terms of Bigfoot movies. There are so, so many more out there, and I wanna know which ones that you enjoy. Let me know down below in the comments which Bigfoot movies I missed and which ones I should check out in a follow-up video. Um, to check out. Hopefully they're better than some of the ones on here, but there were some pretty, there were some pretty good movies on this list. Out of all of the Cryptid Months uh, videos, this one had the highest percentage of enjoyable movies. There's quite a few on here that were a lot of fun to watch that I did not mind whatsoever. Um, obviously some fun trash uh, like Suburban Sasquatch and some of those others, but uh, also some legitimately good movies that I would check out. Again, let me know what you thought of this one down below in the comments, or if you have any Bigfoot, fight, Bigfoot sightings that you want to talk about, put that down there. Also, um, please like the video, click subscribe on the channel, share this out to your friends, and check out the Patreon page at patreon.com slash movietimelines. You can go there and help support the channel like these guys over here have. They're awesome for doing so. Um, or you can just keep on watching the videos. I appreciate that as well, too. And I'll see you very, very shortly for another great one. Thanks a lot, guys, and goodbye.